Hey guys, Alec Pierce, scuba tech tips. Now, I discussed this with Kevin earlier and we're not exactly sure if this is a modern scuba tech tip or if this is a vintage scuba vintage scuba tech tip but anyway we're going to do it here and i'm going to do it here for a couple of reasons first of all this applies to uh, all divers it applies to modern divers and it applies to you vintage divers too basically what it comes down to is how do i keep my regulator looking new looking really really nice well <clears throat> today it's pretty easy because today's regulators look like this they're all plastic there's one example here's another example here this regulator is also all plastic they don't use the word plastic you know they use Cycolac. Basically, it's a synthetic material. Very, 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 very hard. It's the same material that your steering wheel in your car is made from, or the front and rear bumpers and so on. You know they're, they're pretty tough. So that's what these are made of today, modern regulators. First stages and even second stage, or first stages, I'm sorry, uh, uh, second stages for sure. Even first stages, I know, are now covered sometimes with a plastic covering, uh, and, and uh, it's great. It really is good because this stuff is completely impervious to almost anything. It does scratch a little bit, uh, but salt water, cold water, dirty water, doesn't matter. They don't corrode. They don't wear out. It used to be that eventually, and if you used your ring for a few years, you'd have to replace the body or the face plate or other parts because the, the chrome-plated brass they were made from did wear out. These don't. So, you know, there's lots and lots of information on our tech tips and other tech tips on how to keep a modern regulator clean, which essentially comes down to soaking it, cleaning it really, really well after every use. Not once a year. After every use, you need to do it because salt actually hardens on there and it doesn't come off with a rinse. So you need to do that. However, older regulators <clears throat> didn't look like that. I have a, an older regulator here, and I'll show you <clears throat> the older regulator that, in my opinion, were beautiful. Okay? I, I don't know what, what you all think, but I'm sure that if you're more than 25 or 30 years old, you may remember uh, some beautiful old cars. Okay? And, and so the old car would look like this. My first car was a 56 Buick Special. Yeah, yeah, it had more, more, more chrome on it uh, th than anything I'd ever seen. Great big solid chrome bumpers. It was incredible. So now here is a modern second stage, and here is a vintage second stage. Can you see that, Kevin? Not too much light glinting off it. I mean, work with me on this. That's just beautiful. I don't care if you're a chrome fan or not. This is gorgeous. Compare the two of them, okay? However, however, you notice, by the way, that even the exhaust, even the exhaust is chrome. Yeah, these are all rubber. And the, the mouthpiece is rubber. That's it. Everything else is, is chromed brass, solid metal chrome brass on it. Uh, uh, however, the downside to any regulator, whether it's an older one like this or a newer one, I notice is a bit, of a, a, a bit interesting that on this <clears throat> uh, fairly modern regulator made of black plastic that they have put on a chrome plastic ring yeah it's plastic uh and, and but it's chrome colored i guess that appeals to the old guy even put a bit of chrome on it can't get away from it chrome is beautiful but anyway the downside <clears throat> to these beautiful old regulators is that they do corrode if they get salt or uh, that they, they'll begin to break down the, the 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 brass material which has been exposed or doesn't have a good chrome coating on it turns green you may have seen them i have one here I have a, a greenie right here. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, Kevin, but you see the ring that goes around. And you see how it's gone green. Well, that, that green is, is from the brass. Uh, brass is largely copper, and copper turns green when it corrodes, certainly in salt water. So I've actually had regulators like this, like this old beauty come in for service or, or you know, sometimes for trade-in, whatever, and they're completely corroded and green and, and sometimes they're rusty colored and, and just, just dreadful. This one is a pretty nice shape. But anyway, the point is this. Uh, if you do have, and, and even back then, the, the first stages uh, were, were still, were still uh, steel, or sorry, brass, uh, chrome-plated brass. Now, there's a reason for that. They say, why don't they make the, entire, the first stage entirely out of plastic, like the second stage? Well, because of the, the first stage has to withstand great pressures. Okay, so the plastic is very, very good, but you cannot buy plastic scuba tanks because of the pressure, and you cannot buy a complete plastic a first stage for a regular because the first stage has to withstand that 3,000 PSI. So that's why. Now they tend to cover it 
with plastic to make it look plastic, but it actually is the same as this inside. And, and, but you see here with this old uh, regulator that the first stage as well is beautifully chrome all over, just a, just a gorgeous. So now how do you clean that? Uh, now whether it's, whether it's your current new regulator that has, it, they still have uh, chrome fittings, and they still have the chrome um, um, uh, yoke, yoke on them, and, and the knob screws, and there's still lots of chrome, certainly on the first stage. <clears throat> so how do you clean that stuff? And, and there's a variety of ways of doing that. First, the first thing you do, uh, you do, of course, is, is soak it. You soak it uh, in, in uh, good fresh water, and then give it a light scrubbing, warm water, and soap. And that should take off, unless you completely neglected your regulator entirely, that should take off an awful lot of the surface dirt and the corrosion. But if you have a regulator and it looks uh, a bit like this, <clears throat> how do you clean it? And you do have to exercise a little bit of care because they are chrome plated over brass. Everything in scuba, most things in scuba are brass, uh, f forged or, or, uh, or uh, uh, formed brass parts. And then, because brass is, is corrosion resistant, you know, fittings on boats and so on are always brass. And then it's chrome plated. It's not chrome plated for looks, although I think it looks better. Uh, it is chrome plated for protection because, as I mentioned earlier, the brass will discolor. It begins to get a patina on it, uh, uh, vertiginous is sometimes what it's called, and, and it will start to turn green. So they chrome plate the brass, so it ends up looking like this. And there are a couple of problems with that, as I mentioned, it gets corrosion on it. The other thing is that it gets scratches on it too. Yeah, if, if you now if you drop a whole lot of time, you drop your plastic regulator a whole bunch, it'll start to get scratches on it too. You'll see them. And it may have been glossy when you bought it, but it's not glossy now. It's been used a great deal. And so just some normal use and scratches, it, it, it uh, gets badly scratched. But it doesn't look that bad. It hasn't, it hasn't changed very much. If you get a nice chrome regulator, and you've used it a great deal, dragged it through the sand or, or over the rocks a few times or just thrown it in your dye bag, bottom in the dive boat or whatever, it'll start to get scratched and pretty soon it looks pretty crummy. What do you do about that? Well, the answer is really very simple. After you've cleaned it, simply uh, rinsed it in water, maybe warm soapy water and a brush all over. After you've cleaned it, as you would any regulator, and it still isn't, it doesn't make you happy, well then you very simply use metal polish. That's right. Again, you have to be careful. Some people have said to me, well, I use steel wool. Ugh, you got to be really, really careful. If you're going to use steel wool, <clears throat> not bad, but number one, you need to use the finest steel wool that you can find. Uh, triple aught or four aught. Okay, so steel wool, I don't know if you know this, is ranked in numbers. So number one is a certain grit, certain uh, uh, coarseness. Number two, three, four, four is quite coarse. Get very coarse. And, but if you go down the other way, you can get zero which is finer, and then double zero, triple zero, get four zero. Steel wool is really fine. Oh yeah, it's like, it's like fine cat hair. You know, I'm an expert on hair. <laughs> so very, it's very, very fine. And with very, very fine steel wool, you can very gently scratch uh, and polish, and sometimes those scratches will disappear. But the better thing to do is to use a metal polish. Now there's lots of them out there. Lots of metal polishes out there. You can go into any hardware store and you can find metal polish, uh, different uh, types of metal polish, and they're all good. See if you can find something that's a universal metal polish. It doesn't have to be specifically, well, you won't find one specifically for scuba regulators, I don't think, but you don't need to find one specifically for chrome or for brass or for gold or silver. Just a general metal polish will work really well. Now, how do they work? Well, what they are, generally speaking, is an extremely fine uh, material, stone usually material, suspended in a, in a grease. So basically it's, uh, it, it's a little paste and, and you put it on the, on the chrome and some of them you let it sit there for a little while and it starts to soften up any corrosion, any dirt that's on there and then after it's sat there for a while and after you've rubbed and then you rub it really really hard and you're actually polishing the metal and when you finish it's going to be dull, you're going, what the hell that didn't help no, yeah, now you have to polish it with a nice clean dry cloth you have to polish it and make it look really really nice uh, there's lots of them out there um, this is one that I like, it's called Otto Soul. I have used this for years on my motorcycles, and you know, there's lots of lots of chrome on motorcycles. I'll show you the name of this particular one. Show them this, Kevin, if you would, because this is a particularly good one that I have found anyway, and it's pretty much universally available in most places, and it works really, really well, specifically for the purpose of polishing metals. There's other ones as well. There's one called Flitz. Flitz. F-L-I-T-Z. Uh, uh, Z for my Canadian viewers. 
F-L-I-T-Z, Flitz, and there's all kinds of them. So you just go into your local hardware store, Home Depot, whatever, and look for metal polish. You'll find lots of them. How do they work? Well, really very simple. You take a tiny, tiny bit. You get a nice clean cloth, not like this one. A nice clean cloth, and you take a little bit. Maybe I'll try to polish up this uh, green thing here, Kevin. Eh? Let's see what we can do. Let's see what happens here. Okay, we'll take a we'll take a section. That looks like it's ruined. Uh, it's not perfect, but we'll give this a try. Can you see that there? And you and you put the you put your metal polish on. You see it? You, are you, can you are you able to see this, Kevin? Is that hard to do? Okay, so you put this on. I'll hold the ring still. You put that on like that. Now, of course, you can see it, it goes dull. And then I go for a coffee. It should sit on there for several minutes. Okay, and, and there's actually, apparently, anyway, and this is quite true with this, it's actually working. If there's some corrosion and different types of, uh, of deposits on there, a lot of those are being eaten away while, while we're talking. And then, and then you rub it really hard. I'm going to go down here for a second, Kevin. And you rub it really, really hard with the same piece of cloth. And this is where that grit is working on this now. The grit is, is digging in and smoothing out the scratches and I hope smoothing out the chrome. And do you know it's working? Oh, look, it's working. All that was on here. And now you look at it and say, wow, this, uh, that looks a little better. It was not really chrome, not really shiny chrome yet. See that? Can you see the difference there? Yes. Okay, so then you wait another couple of seconds, and then you take a nice, clean, soft cloth, and then you polish it. Yeah. Oh, I polish it up nicely like this. You know how many hours I spent polishing motorcycles over the years? Hundreds of hours. All the way from my, my 1966 Ducati up to my brand new Indian, brand spanking new Indian. Oh, yeah, I love polishing. And that was a really, really nasty green uh, corrosion. And still you can see that the chrome is badly pitted. Take a piece like this. <clears throat> yeah, this, this is actually a regulator. <laughs> yeah, there were very few square regulators on the market. And there were a few uh, square regulators on the market, but that's, this is a square uh, and, and Voight Avalon, it was called. And uh, it's a pretty neat looking regulator. It sits like that, a couple of screws in the bottom, it's just like a purge button on the front. Uh, pretty neat. This is, I don't know why they made it square. The diaphragm that goes inside is round, so the whole regulator is really round. But uh, the outside was square. It's an odd one, uh, but it did have uh, it did have a nice chrome surface. Let's do this one more time just to see what that looks like. And I will take a spot. Amber, we'll take a spot. Oh, there's a spot right there. Just take a spot again. You put the polish on like so. Let it sit for a minute while it does its thing. <clears throat> And you can just imagine, I'm going to polish this up in a few minutes, and you'll see a picture of this. If you go back to the thumbnail at the beginning of, of this YouTube, you'll see the th this regulator polished in the thumbnail. I won't do it right now, waste your time. And then once again, as hard as you can, rub that polish in there. And I've done this on old, old two-hose regulators from, from the 50s and 60s, so it's quite safe. Uh, to do. You're not going to hurt your regulator. So there we're getting there and then <clears throat> let it sit for a minute and then give it a, a polish like that with a nice microfiber cloth. Any diver would be proud to uh, to uh, play with that, have that regulator. Huh? Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so there you go guys. Get some um, get some metal polish. Don't be afraid. You look at your regulator at the end of the season. If you have an end of the season, and, uh, and you say, my gosh, my great old regular that I love so much <coughs> is, is certain to show its wear. I wish it was new again. You can make it new again. Yep, get some metal polish, uh, rinse, warm, soapy water, and uh, clean it as much well as you can with a brush first, and then rinse it. Now, if it's possible, take it apart. If you know what you're doing, you don't just jump in there and grab it, but if you can take the clamp off and take the body pieces apart, it's usually the front, you see, like this, that is, um, uh, that is, uh, kind of crusty. I just know it's just decor uh, dart. I hope that helped a little bit, answered your question from uh, one of my viewers. Thank you very much. How do I uh, polish the, uh, the metal parts, the chrome on my regulator? There's your answer. Now, you go back to the thumbnail at the very beginning and you will see uh, this, this beautiful old uh, Voigt Viking regulator with the chrome exhaust. You'll see this all shined up as well. Anyway, I hope there's something in there, some value to you. And I will talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce Cuba. Take care, guys.